Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at the market site in Times Square, we have Luke Tilley, he's the Chief Economist with Wilmington Trust, and we're going to focus on portfolio positioning for monetary easing again. Luke, it's great to have uh, you with us. And my question is, inflation's under control. We're near at full employment. Why cut it all? Doesn't that signal weakness? Yeah, so the Fed definitely has met both part of its mandate, right? Inflation is under control, as you said. Unemployment is pretty low. And what they've said explicitly is that they are looking forward. And what they want to do is cut interest rates uh, based on the outlook. That's what they said after the July 31st meeting. And uh, Jerome Powell said it again last week when he was speaking in Switzerland. He explicitly said, we think that the economy is OK. We're not expecting a recession. Uh, however, we are, we are making policy based on those risks, and the risks that he had outlined before saying that was the trade and tariff situation, and of course the slowdown in global growth. Uh, a lot of spillover coming from the slowdown in Germany and the, basically the global manufacturing slowdown. Do you think rates have been too low for too long? I don't think they've been too low for too long. Basically, if you were going to make that argument from the economics point of view, uh, you would say if you kept rates too low for too long, it would generate some really high inflation. And we simply have not seen that. The economy hasn't been strong enough. There hasn't been as much demand to really pull that inflation higher. Uh, so they haven't been too low for too long in that sense. If you were going to make that argument, you would have to say that the low rates have been hurting savers and have really been crimping consumer spending. We're of the view, and clearly the Fed is of the view, that having the low rates for borrowers outweighs that hit that you've had to the savers. Uh, so since raising rates since 20, 2015, that first rate hike up until um, uh, the, the reduction on July 31st, we're still in a fairly low interest rate environment, but that follows the improvement of the economy uh, from those low rates that we had for so long. The ECB just announced a new round of QE. How should our Federal Reserve be working in concert with the other global central banks? It shouldn't, uh, at least in my opinion. I don't think that the Fed or the ECB should be coordinating or moving together because you've got two different economies. You should have two different interest rate policies. Uh, if you've got one economy doing fairly well, it should have one level of interest rates, whereas the German economy going into recession and could very well pull the European economy down into recession, they should have a different monetary policy. That said, you do have to recognize the impacts. When one bank is moving one way, one central bank is moving one way with interest rates, it's going to have impacts because of capital flows. Uh, so something that the Fed has to grapple with is the fact that some of those impacts are going to be coming over uh, over to the U.S. and it, it affects us, but they shouldn't be coordinating in any way. Does history necessarily have to repeat itself? Because you kind of hear that narrative in financial media. X happened when we cut rates this time. Will it happen again in 2019? Right. So something that people sometimes say is this time is different, which is always sort of a dangerous thing to say. Uh, I prefer to say that this time is always different. So history is always a little bit of a guide, but the, uh, the particulars of any situation are very different. Uh, what we have going on right now is very similar to what we had in 1998, where you had a slowdown in the economy. Uh, it wasn't necessarily heading into recession, but you had some troubles from overseas, some financial market indicators, and the Fed ended up cutting at that point by 75 basis points in the middle of a cycle, no recession. Prolonged, uh, prolonged the start of the next recession for quite some time. This does look like that historical experience, but of course we have a very different economy than we did 21 years ago, different rates of inflation. So we think it's best to just pay attention to the current situation, be on the lookout for asset bubbles, and of course uh, how markets are doing and how inflation and employment are doing. What do you think is more important for the global economy and the markets, a clear interest rate policy, a clear global trade policy, or a combination of the two? Yeah, combination of the two for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, because because they're both very important. The trade policy, in our view, is something that has really hurt the economy on the short end of things ever since that second round of tariffs went in in September of last year. If you look at the ISM, uh, Institute for Supply Management's uh, measures of the manufacturing sector and services sector, they both peaked right around the same time as those tariffs went in. So we've been suffering the consequences of that. Uh, and that's not to say that the, the goals of the tariff and the, sort of the discussions with the Chinese aren't laudable. We just know that it's had some impact on the economy and it's going to help the economy if that gets resolved. Having a clear monetary policy and sort of the appropriate interest rates is also incredibly important. Uh, but the one thing that we have a fair amount of conviction about at Wilmington Trust is if we proceed with ever more tariffs and sort of that escalation, that uh, interest, lower interest rates from the Fed would help, but it wouldn't be able to outweigh uh, the impacts of the tariffs. It's sort of like having the wrong medicine uh, for, for the disease that you've got. All right, let's wrap it up with your Q4 outlook and of course your longer term outlook going into what's going to be an interesting election cycle. 
Right, so for Q4, we're looking for a little bit of a slowdown in the economy and economic growth, and that's not very pessimistic. We just recognize that we've had some strong numbers at the beginning of this year. We still think the consumer is strong, but we also think that company CapEx is gonna be on its heels a little bit until we get some resolution of the trade and tariff situation. So continued job growth, continued spending, a little bit of weakness in CapEx, and as we head into 2020, we're gonna be watching those factors very closely. We think that if businesses can get some certainty about trade and tariffs, that there's more CapEx that'll be coming back we can continue this cycle. All right, Luke, thanks so much for joining us Thank at MarketSite. And thanks for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.